dietary protein for more muscles or muscle hypertrophy. Is this important only for sports or is it also important for the elderly, for people who have a metabolic disease? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, you could make a really good argument that it's much more, especially on a global health worldwide basis, much more important for those other populations. Uh, it's very clear that one of the problems in older people is that they don't eat enough protein, at least a lot of them. Also, some of these aspects of the timing of the protein intake is, is different, and the dose of the protein, if we think about that older people probably need sort of 30 to 40 grams in a dose, if you, if you look at the dietary pattern of the way older people eat, they tend to eat very little protein in the morning for breakfast. They eat uh, more at lunch and even more at dinner, so not spacing it out. That, that could very well help. So a lot of these strategies that we're starting to discover make a difference to the anabolic response, I think, could very easily be applied to, to other populations and very, very well should be applied to other populations. So from staying healthy as an elderly to athletes. If you're uh, in endurance or resistance training, you need protein. First question, what type of protein is best? Well, again, I think, I think one of the things you got to think about is what people normally eat. And um, it, it's clear in these studies, in the way that we do these studies, that, that whey protein in particular and dairy protein seem to be particularly effective for, for, muscle, for stimulating muscle growth after exercise. So, 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 so that might be a suggestion. However, uh, protein supplementation for all populations is not necessarily the best answer. And to, to my, if, it, if it were my grandmother, I'd tell her after she goes to the gym to go home and eat a nice, nice meal of good food that she likes because most older people aren't going to want to have a protein, a protein shake or something. So, you know, and there are big areas in the world where there is no dairy protein around, in particular, you no know, whey protein, which is a leftover from cheese production. So how about soy protein? Well, soy protein stimulates protein synthesis. It's just that you're, start, you're seeing slightly better responses with whey. And, and so, th yeah, any protein is going to work. It's just some, we're trying to find out if some are better than others. Now, these, these studies are probably, uh, most people aren't going to eat, as I said before, most people probably won't rely on a protein supplement for, for their protein. So, yeah, if they can't, if, if, if they're not eating um, whey protein in a, in a supplement, then, then you know, have a, have a nice chicken breast or a tuna sandwich. That's good, that's good, <laughs> that sounds great. So, we know what now, how much? Well, again, uh, if you talk about how much on a total dietary basis, it seems to be a fairly broad range that you can get a good response of muscle protein growth. I'm uh, sorry, muscle growth. So, so you know, even 1.2, probably more than 0.8, but, but it doesn't have to be huge amounts like a lot of the bodybuilders believe. Um, but, but most people, uh, not older people necessarily, but most people eat enough protein in their diets in our Western type so let me ask more, uh, more in detail. Uh, before you exercise, you eat how much protein? How many grams? If you are adult, yourself, for example. Well, I, I would eat breakfast and then and this two or three hours later I'd go to... Just how much protein in? Uh, I probably would have about 20 grams of 20 protein grams. In, the, in the breakfast, yeah. I, would, I try to eat around 20, 25 grams in each, each dose. And the timing is before? During, after, what is the best timing? It, it seems to be that you want to have some protein in close proximity to the exercise, and it doesn't seem to matter whether it's before or after. Now, there are some details on that, that, that if you were to eat protein right before you exercised, it's not as effective as if you ate it a little bit uh, ahead of time, maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And after but the it, exercise? But it's more important for what's comfortable for you, for mm -hmm. each individual, because some people can't eat a lot before they go exercise, and some people can... Feel uncomfortable. Can, yeah, yeah, so you want to you do what's, what works best, what works best for you, and think about more spacing it throughout the day, but try to get, try to get some protein around the exercise. If you're comfortable having it beforehand, fine, but most people are going to probably have it afterwards. When, and they're probably, you know, most people are going to go, if they're going to go exercise, when they feel hungry, they're going to come, they're going to come back and want to eat. Okay. So I would have some protein in that, in that meal. 20 grams again. I would probably, yeah, 20, 25, depends. 
If you're bigger, maybe you want a little bit more. Okay. Thank you very much. My pleasure.